Hello, disc golf fans, and welcome to the final round coverage of the 2020 Finnish National Championships. This is Gatekeeper Media, uh, representing Natural Born Disc Golfer, a media company out of Finland. Again, I am Brian Earhart, joined here by my co-host, Nate Perkins. And Nate, I am so excited to showcase Finnish disc golf here. This is a real treat, Brian. You and I have both had the pleasure of traveling to Finland and competing there, and we know just how serious they are about disc golf. It is a completely different world out here. And as you can see, the ages of these players it's unbelievable how much their scene is exploding. We have uh, Niklas Antila, we have Jesse Niminen, and we have Vino Makila, all under the age of 21. These are top-rated competitors. And then we have the uh, salty veteran, Yana Hirismaki, age 42, still a very solid sidearm dominant player. This Finnish disc golf scene never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, we have three players, 21 and younger, who make up the top 30 players in the entire world. They, they take the game so seriously over in Finland. They have over 750 courses, and only California has more thousand rated players than Finland. Wow. This place, is a dreamland for disc golf, and I'm so excited to share this with you all. They are playing the Seabay Disc Golf Course, and their style of disc golf over here is so exciting. What do you think about this hole? Hole one, par three, 295, OB everywhere. The OB long and left is right behind the basket. It's park it or you're out of bounds. Yeah, this is straight up trust your distance, trust your disc. And this is something that Finnish disc golf has a lot of, is this white staked OB. I find it to be very tasteful though. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Niklas is such a smooth backhand hyzer flip player. Has a style that reminds me a lot of Austin Hannum. Just very compact, very spinny, but he has incredible control over the disc. This first hole is actually blind too, so it makes that distance judgment that much harder. We threw something a little faster there. It looked like a PD. Oh, 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 Brian. That's a way to do it. And you hear the fans in the background. Finland uh, was able to quarantine and get out of their COVID guidelines uh, a lot quicker than a lot of other places in the world. So fans were allowed back much quicker than, uh, than in the States where we still don't have fans yet. And this player right here, Yese. We saw him pop off at the European Open last year with the opening round of 14 under par. Yeah. And this kid has world-class sidearm and needs to be in the talks about who has the best sidearm in the game right now. He's got the hyzer flip, he's got the flex, he's got the mid-range putter. It's, it's really, really a pleasure to watch. We might be a little bit more f familiar with Vino. He has traveled to the U.S. a couple times and played some of the bigger events over here. Oh, yeah. One of the uh, premier technical players that I've potentially ever seen and controls a lot of steep hyzer flips really, really, really well. And just as you said, Brian, flipping that steep hyzer up to flat, drifting it straight. And I have had the pleasure of playing with Yane, and he is a phenomenal player and has a notably powerful sidearm which as the years go by, you know, playing this game, he's 42, to have that durability to still throw the power sidearm is so, so uh, impressive and also has the backhand as well. 
This must be a real treat for him to make this lead card final round at, oh, yeah. at the finish nationals. This is a big deal for these players. Absolutely. For some of these players, it's a, the biggest tournament that they can win. Kind of a safe run from about 35-40. And you just hear that applause even on the miss. I love that. And Vino is currently number one in Finland. He overtook Seppo Paiu after a long streak of dominance in the country. And now he is really pulling away. Oh. So direct, Brian. That is... Just that left hand on the hip, keeping uh -huh. that left shoulder back. They don't call him the archer for nothing. Just low from about 25, 30 for Yese. He will settle for a par. Niklas and Vino are going to take birdies. We're going to move on to number two, 292 feet, 89 meters. Again, OB directly to the right and behind the basket here. This is going to be a forehand for a lot of players. There is a backhand line, but I've been noticing over the years that a lot of players have thrown sidearm traditionally on this hole. Yeah, there's that Mando on the right that kind of forces these players to throw a shot from left to right. Niklas was going for that late flip backhand. Ooh, that flipped quick. But he got a great kick there, and it pushes him just outside circle one, I believe, which is very fortunate. Spike sidearm from Vino. That's going to sit down to about 25. Yes, he looks like he has a harp. Oh my goodness, that is incredible the way he just flipped that thing up. I have seen some of the most impressive sidearms in my entire time playing disc golf watching him. And Including that ace at the European Open. Yes. You remember that one, Brian? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's only been on the scene for a you know not that long of a time. More traditional play here from Yane, a little wide. Still putting. You can hear the wind picking up just a bit. His putt did rise just a tad. And that is a solid birdie putt for the young Phenom. And Niklas has been recently winning on tour in Finland, and he is starting to make a serious name for himself as well. Vino sure is a sharp shooter. I love this oh, setup. Yeah. Yeah, you know, after a long time of, you know, pitch putting or push putting reigning supreme in champions, uh, I feel like Vino is one of those players that's starting to take back the spin putt as, a, as an elite putt. And uh, I think it's due to how deliberate he is with his setup. And uh, 
Have some birdies rolling out for our card, and we're going to move into hole number three, 830 feet. Nate, what do you think about this hole? At 830 feet, you have to smash this drive. You need to flip one up and push it straight past that clump of trees on the left to land in a very, very sensitive landing zone. There's only a few spots that you can land where you can even consider getting all the way up to the green yes. on the second. And this is a... a honestly a textbook european style par four from what i've seen to get to this landing zone to have a slow disc approach shot through the tight gap you don't only have to throw a power hyzer but a flipping power hyzer you have to shape the disc with distance dd3 here from nicholas and you saw he was trying to do exactly that he luckily pushed straight so he'll be able to pitch up just low he gets the height on that. I think he has plenty of speed. Exactly. And this is a shot that Vino is amazing at. Just a little skip. Oh. Using the height of the disc to stall it instead of put wing angle on it. And that is, that's it. That's perfect positioning for Vino. He's going to have a potentially mid-range to the green, maybe even a putter. And yes, he definitely has the power to match Vino here. Needed to flip a tiny bit more, but I think it's going to be solid. Ooh, he wow. is going to deal with that bunker of trees, making that shot a little tougher. And you saw that little hyzer flip from Yane. Same miss. It's going to be kind of a tough up and down if they want to go for the birdie. It's just so refreshing to see fans yeah it's amazing to see fans again and even hearing them kind of gives me the the chills to be honest with you hard hyzer wow, out of the hand going for this one that is flipping up late oh probably as good as he could have done from that, that was position. amazing Nyese has put his to about late circle two with that smooth drifting sidearm. I'm excited to watch this throughout the rest of the round. That that little reach back that, that he has with his wrist at that very last moment. It's that little bit of lag before he, he releases the disc. And I think Yane has thrown even, even better sidearm on this one. Fantastic. Okay, that's fortunate. a decent result right there. Fortunate result after that misfire. We like to call that tree love in the United States. <laughs> Come on. Should be about 15. And this is a par four. This is a very challenging par four. Okay. Inches away from dunking that approach. That would have been a solid three there for Niklas. <laughs> and that just shows you how far up this pin really is. Yeah. I mean, yes, he bombed off the tee and bombed his approach and is still short. As well as Yane. Yeah, and this is the best second shot of the card. Almost gets the three. Yes. And I would be hard pressed to believe that this hole averaged over par for the tournament with how difficult that birdie looks to get. Sticks it for another four. Niklas should be no problem here for his four as well.
And a pretty solid spread of fours here for our card. We are gonna move into hole number four, 400 feet dead straight. The tough part I'm noticing about this course is look at where these like big stone slabs are located. Yeah, you have to know what kind of reaction you're gonna get on what type of angle. Yeah, so I think with the OB so tight to the right, you're gonna see players playing a little flippier disc than they're used to trying to land it soft without getting those hard skips if they wanna go for the birdie that is. Yeah, look at that slow drift out of the hand. Oh, it's gonna get the rocks. Oh, it does. Yeah. Great shot. Flip. That keeps oh, moving left, in. but it's hitting the rocks and it's gonna slide a little bit. Close mm. to out of bounds, Shut but up. still safe. Actually, not a bad position to putt from. There is so much OB down there. Yeah. Going a little flex out of the hand. Needs that one to stable up. Yes. What a shot. And he played that flex, I would have to say deliberately to lessen the speed of that skip off those rocks if he happens to miss. That's a beautiful shot. Yanni throwing a nice shot that's fading a little bit. Still safe. Four for four is impressive on this hole. had three from that exact distance already today. All have been close. Top band for Niklas. That stroke looked very solid. Pretty quick setup, I'd say. Yeah. And this is, this is a putting stroke from somebody who has spent, I would probably say thousands of hours on a putting basket, practicing and studying and training, just like all these fins are doing and they're pushing each other to take the game to another level. I cannot wait for them to come back over to the States. I mean, just seeing that it's being dominated by these youngsters here, it's, it is so promising. And that's my next question as well, is how can we help these athletes yeah. get to the United States and compete on the Disc Golf Pro Tour where they should be? Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. And I heard speaking to Seppo Paiu, seven-time Finnish national champion, he said after being in the States and being in Finland his whole life, the Finnish scene is blowing up even more so at the professional level than in the States. So it's going to be it. an exciting future. So they're playing this par three. The real danger is a little OB pond, as you saw on the fly through. They have to pretty much go deep or fade left if they want to have a safe putt. It looks like Bino's lining up the forehand, not his preferred shot, so you know that that out-of-bounds pawn must be right in that landing zone of a late flipping backhand. Yeah, that's an A2 out of his hand, and that's solid. Good enough. Chooses the faster of the two. Oh, that was on track. That was on track to be absolutely parked. He's still about 20, 25 from the basket. Glow FT3 from Nicholas. Looking to match Jesse's line. 
Little high. Great shot, great result. Made it through the canopy. I couldn't tell. Did it go? I did not see any sort of OB marker. Oh, oh no. that is so close. That might be OB if it's based off of the outside edge of the stakes. In these situations right here, they did call it out of bounds. This is a situation where having a just piece of string in your bag to tie from stake to stake can really, really help out with these types of calls. Because, yeah, that's really, really close. Unfortunate break there for Yane. It's going to settle for his four there. I can't get over the extension with the wrist right before he draws it back down to his hip. Yeah. Just opening, pointing at the pole, down to the hip. It's so it's so robotic, you could say. It's it's really beautiful to watch. Solid putt there for Vino. He is four for five. And and I love I've been noticing Yesse's weight. It's it's really it's forward. It's really on that front foot. His shoulders are kind of over. Reminds me of Calvin's putt almost yeah, just, in a way. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And you know, the Finnish disc golf scene is still younger than the States, but you have to remember that a lot of, you know, once the U.S. professionals started traveling to Finland and doing clinics over there, they were taught very proper mechanics right away from some of the best players in the world. So they uh, <laughs> are no slouches when it comes to uh, technique here. And moving into hole number six, 1,004 feet. What do you think here, Nate? I think that this is one of the most treacherous par fives um that we've ever played. Yes. And talk about sensitive landing zone. Right there as the drone just passed, that's one of those zones where even if you are three feet away from, from the middle of the fairway, it's a completely different shot shape that you have to throw around this corner. It is an endless corridor of tight landing zones and you're likely gonna be scrambling from wherever you are in the fairway. Footing is not certain here. Yeah, it's a thousand feet, but you can only bite off so much off yeah. this tee shot. You see Vino here going putter off the tee. Yeah, perfect positioning. He'll be able to do something pretty similar from the second shot. Yesse looking to get one maybe a little bit further and around that corner. That's early. Oh no. Great result though, honestly. It's gonna totally handicap his first angle. miss it oh, it yeah does. it looks like he was trying to maybe bite off a little bit more and turn it around the corner to make that second shot easier he might be a little pinched off that was a misfire from Yane Yeah, he couldn't bite very much distance off at all with that second. 
Final best of the four. Looking straight down the alleyway. Oh no! Hit that boulder. I'm not sure how tight he is to it. He might have a full approach from that next lie. Mm. Decent Almost. patent pending just right off into the fringe. Yeah, look how tight this 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 whole sets up for what Vino tried to play, and it just looks like the footing is very uneven here. And that's a great Gorgeous. line. Wow. Perfect shot. Still can't see the pin. He's wanting it to go right. Oh, no. <sighs> Tough result. At least he has that stretch out sidearm. It is going to be a little bit more uncomfortable. So close. The standstills have not been treating Vino very well today. He really has only converted on a couple out of the f you know, five or so that he's had to throw this round. Yeah, those were both pulled. Sometimes we call it grip lock. Uh, Nicholas had to pitch out. It's that DD3 again, hitting it on a nice angle. Wow. Might Covering end a ton up being, of ground. Yeah, might be okay. Oh, oh boy. no, he's looking <laughs> high. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, he was trying to go around that tree. I don't know where he landed. That was an aggressive play. This is a journey. Ooh, little oh, nose up, Lord. turn out of the hand, something flippy. Oh, what a shot mm -hmm. from Yane. Circle two. Wow, this hole's nuts. Is he putting for par? I, I <laughs> totally track. lost track. Needs to move. Needs to drift. I'm getting vibes from hole 12 at Northwoods right, right now. This is the feeling that I have watching these players attack this hole. Multiple levels to the hole. Yeah. That's a solid sidearm from Yese. And he's almost home safe. So close from Vino. He's going to be about 15 for the comeback. Here's Yane after a solid shot. Yane's got that left hand on the hip as well. Traditional spin putt. Little KJ Naibo-esque. Yeah. That's going to be a bogey six for Yese. That's not too bad after some of those lies that he had. Yeah. And that is another bogey for Yane. Oh, and the 
double. Wow, and this hole is eating this card alive. Two bogeys and a double. I believe Nicholas is also putting for single bogey. And that's going to be a single bogey there for Niklas as well. And maintains a three stroke lead yeah. over Yesse. Vino kind of fallen back after that hole. That was a big opportunity for him. And we're going to move to number seven, 256 uphill. But look at the green, entirely stone. Unique. We don't see that very often Absolutely. in the States. Hard and to get your disc to stop moving. Exactly. Soft landing is key here. ESA going with that harp and just watch that late lag, as you said, Brian, with that wrist. Creating a true whip. I think solid shot. Barsby is probably one of the players in the United States that that kind of resembles a little bit. I would say they have wrist kind of very similar, very similar sidearms. It's actually a great observation. Two of probably the best sidearm throwers that I've ever, you know, ever seen out here. So, and that was there from Nicholas. If it was a little bit lower, he had the angle. Mm, little overturn for Yane. He'll be a little short. Hard to really tell how uphill this one is on the camera. Yeah. Very steep. Just look at that nose angle that Vino oh. has to. High branch. Just clipped it. And just look at look at this shot. Look what look where he is putting at this basket. What other sport in the world looks like this? It's absolutely beautiful out here in Finland. Just outside of Helsinki. It it really is some of the some of the best terrain I've seen for the game. I oh, mean, there's yeah. just endless woods, slight elevation, rocks, lakes. I think that these pine forests make some of the best roughs for disc golf. Yes. Oh, no, it didn't. That was high left, but it was so soft. A lot of times you see those just kind of fall down yes. into the basket. Little high left there as well from Niklas, but he's going to snag a par for himself. Vino should be doing the same. And kind of a tough couple holes for our card. We had a bunch of bogeys on the hole prior and then all pars on the par three. Moving into number eight, 512 foot. Again, all stone fairway, all stone green. Nate, what, is the, what are these players trying to play here? I love the shape off the tee here, Brian. They need to flip one up straight and drift it from left to right. It's only 512 feet, so they don't need a ton of distance here. I um, imagine we're going to see some forehands and some late flipping fairways. Hard hyzer out of the hand for Yesse. This disc is flipping up and slowly fading and luckily catches these two trees before skipping right. As you can see, that fairway is sloping towards that right side, which favors the backhand. Look at this thing move right. Wow. Oh, that might have been a good correction. Still a very, very good result there for Niklas. Okay, so these players are going driver here. I imagine that every now and then they get one up there in putting range, being only 5'12". Definitely. 
I would definitely think Seppo playing this hole comes to mind as someone who could flip one down here as well as this man. Oh, he's hitting it so steep. Oh, and maybe just a tad too steep on the initial hyzer angle. You could tell he was trying to put the speed into it to get up to the green, which I honestly agree with. I, I think with how treacherous this fairway is and how, you know, uh, unpredictable it looks. Look at this recovery shot. Ooh, wow. It's got to be circle one. It Absolutely. And there is rocks. the treachery, soft landing. It might be easier to throw these chip shot sidearms, but I would say the optimal play is a floatier backhand. The flatter you can land mm -hmm. that disc. If you're hitting the, this stone green on Heiser, it's gonna be pretty high percentage for a roll away. There it is. Not the first time that Yane has been our uh, furthest shot off the tee. Mm -hmm. Really impressive from the 42 year old. One of the most positive people that I've probably ever played with as well. Fantastic card mate to have. Another one off the top. And there's a birdie, and Yese's taking another stroke on Niklas. Ooh, within two. Within two strokes. Ten holes to play. The best up and down that we've seen so far this round from oh, yeah. Vino right there. And other than that seven he took, he's had a solid front nine. Ooh, and the rare lefty putt. <laughs> he's been practicing those lefty tap-ins. And we have a ball game moving into number nine. What do you think about this man-made hazard here? I think it's beautiful, Brian. The heart hazard right there, right in front of the bucket. I mean, it's it's deliberate. You know, it's it makes these players think. It demands a certain shot. You can't come up short. You also can't skip it to the basket. As they go and stand still here with that harp. Look at this scenic view from the top. He's looking for slight Annie out of the hand. Yep. Letting the elevation kind of drift it back. Oh, wow. And I'm again the rocks. I'm guessing this is a common miss. Just completely Deep. getting air under the disc and thinking it's going to be far enough or not far enough. And it's way farther than you think. Yeah, this one is significantly downhill. And that looks perfect. Oh, Hard oh job. Goodness. That was exactly how the hole was designed. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. I love him. And the difference between hitting the grass as Yane just did and hitting those rocks and getting that flare skip. That's why you want this coming into the green with as little pace as possible. Here's another standstill from Vino. Oh, that's wide. Okay, yeah, it was clears the pine. Potentially wide again, but I think it's going to be okay. More than okay. And it's a, it's a common theme here in Finland. These tee pads are often, the edge of the tee pad is actually a cliff. Yeah, it's raised, elevated tee pads, kind of forcing the players to stay on the pad. And, and you notice it kind of breeds a similar uh, style of throw and yes. follow through. You don't have players like uh, James Conrad yeah. in Finland. I have not seen someone that takes such a large, uh, powerful run up off the tee pad because like you said, I think a lot of these turf pads are elevated, so they have to start on them and they learn to start on the tee pad. Another one off the top. And he's he trying to make a charge here. That 
that was his opportunity. Ooh, confident stroke from Circle's Edge to pick up another stroke on Yessi. That's a big putt right there. Oh, yeah. Three nope. strokes going into the back nine. And those are the types of putts that all the best players in the world are hitting. They know what the stakes are. They know they have a, you know, a match against somebody that's catching, you know, catching up uh, in score to them. And, and hitting that type of putt at this stage in the final round is the sign of a champion's mindset. This is phenomenal coverage. I am loving this from Natural Born Disc Offer. Yeah. Thank you to Gatekeeper Media for the opportunity to showcase these players. These athletes are, they're premier disc golfers. Yeah, these are some of the best players in the world that we unfortunately haven't gotten to see as much of in the past couple years. So make sure to subscribe to both Gatekeeper and Natural Board Disc Golfer on YouTube, and we will catch you for the back nine of the tournament.